road bumps and cycle lanes to speed cameras and taxis. Motorists in this country are used to being pushed around by government. So perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that the government's announced a ban on petrol, diesel and low emission hybrid cars. By 2035, people will only be able to buy electric and hydrogen cars and vans, vehicles that currently only make up around 1% of new sales. Of course, most of us would like to breathe better air, but is a top-down ban the right way of going about it? The IEA's Head of Transport, Dr Richard Wellens, has long warned that such a ban would be a mistake. He said the move showed the government are prepared to impose huge costs on drivers and taxpayers for environmental benefits that are far from certain. So why is the cost likely to be so immense? Firstly, electric vehicles are far more expensive and they're likely to still be by 2035, particularly as production of petrol and diesel cars shifts to low-cost developing countries where they can be produced ever more cheaply. Is the government happy to force poorer motorists off the road, limiting their access to employment opportunities in the process? Secondly, the shift to EVs will require extensive charging infrastructure around the whole of the country that's likely to come at significant cost to the taxpayer. And what about the already strained power grid? This will require huge amounts of extra capacity and upgrades. And even after we've made these hugely costly upgrades, are EVs really as green as they're made out to be? The answer, I'm afraid, is no. Emissions from manufacturing EVs can be as much as 68% higher than for petrol and diesel cars. Reductions in greenhouse gas emissions are therefore likely to be disappointing and in global terms, completely trivial. If you take into consideration the fact that China, were it to reduce its coal consumption by half, it would be equivalent of the whole of the European Union and the United Kingdom going carbon neutral. The government's ban is yet another, I'm afraid, example of ministers trying to rig the market and pick winners. And as is nearly always the case, with very few exceptions, the costs are likely to outweigh the benefits.